and the rangers of the north were absent, brigands and ruffians took an opportunity to wrest control of Bree. Hey guys, it's Hannah here, and I am um, going to be doing Thievery Must Keep with my friend Gaston. Uh, we're going to be showing you how to do this instance if this is your first time. Uh, we're doing, we'll be doing this at level 95, he's level 100, but that shouldn't really matter. If anything, it makes it easier to show you what we're supposed to do. So, the premise of this is that Bree is being overrun by these horrible brigands and we have to kill them. We start off in the south of Bree, and by killing these guys we can then activate the flag that opens the gate. Um, you progress through Bree, kill some mobs, it's rinse and repeat, and then essentially you get to the end and you kill those big baddies at the end. Um, and it's all just dandy. This should take about 10 minutes. Um, I'll cut it if it is too long. I don't want you to just sit here and be bombarded by me talking about mobs and boring things. I'll try and keep this quite simple. So we've just killed the uh, last mob and this will open the gate and we can now reclaim and, and go through. So thank you Gaston for your fantastic lightning bolts and fire. <laughs> um, okay we're just waiting for these. Here we go. So the uh, mobs have now activated. You can see that this big troll has got these shields around his body. This means that he isn't currently um, able to be killed or, act or damaged. Uh, so we're going to kill the mobs around him first. I'm just getting aggro, and from this we can then kill him. Um, these little conjunctions that come up, these group manoeuvres, um, they're handy but in this level when you've got a very basic mob, um, especially if you've got a lot of DPS, you don't really need to waste time doing any conjunctions. Um, however, I would suggest that if you've got a big boss it's going to take a long time to kill, we'll always press yellow. If it's a very simple mob, press uh, red. If you're very low on uh, power, click blue. And if you're low on morale or health points, click green. And that's just a standard for pretty much anything. Some raids require you to have certain um, colours for different people, but we're not going to talk about that in this video. I'll cover that in Dragoch, which is a uh, level 75 raid that came out um, in the... Uh, goodness, what's it called? Something about Isengard. Oh, I can't remember its name. My apologies, Turbine. <laughs> right, so we've just killed this um, another troll here. We're in the south of Bree at the moment, so we're going to be going around and killing the extra mobs. I'm just going to fast forward, uh, because this is very basic, and I don't really need to talk about this. Okay, here we go. So we're going to kill this last mob. Um, yeah, that actually just, um, probably just show as a warning that even at level 95 people can make mistakes and forget where the mobs are. Um, so don't feel bad about if you spend half an hour looking for a mob, which I have done before. And it's not my proudest moment. So anyway, we're going to continue on, charge forth, and click on this flag. Uh, it probably should be noted that if you take ages to um, having completed the last mob to actually click on the flag, it will stop um, doing the, the spinny, shining thing, which means that you can lose it, especially if you're doing something like trouble in Tukra, uh you can lose where the flag is. So anyway, uh, here we go, we've opened this gate, we can now kill the mobs. And I believe a counter-attack will be launched in a second after killing these guys. Here we go. So, after killing these... I'm just going to blast through this. Um, it's very simple. Um, it's probably one of the most... I don't know, one of the easiest instances that you can do. Um, this takes a bit of patience. Again, it takes about 10 minutes, so it's very easy. Lots of fun. Okay, we're going to go back... Um, and kill one of these signatures. This this guy's called Grug Lup, I believe. He's um he's a goblin. Quite hard to kill if you're on your own. If you've got a level 100 runekeeper, you'll probably be fine. Um, so we're just going to kill this dude here. I'm personally on damage at the moment because it's just there's no point in me tanking. I'm not I'm at no threat of dying, especially with this healer with me. So yeah, just go damage if you have a healer with you. Um, and you can you can duo this quite easily. After killing this little dude here, you get these banners, which when you click on them, um, cause this circle of light around you, which can cause like a damage debuff on the mob, or it can increase your hope, or it can do lots of different things depending on the one you get. Okay, so we're going to go through here. Um, you'll realise that when you start to tank, and I realise that a lot of my videos I talk about tanking, it's because I've been tanking more than anything else. Um, if you get there first, just run up to the mobs and they will run to you. That means that you have, in a way, you have aggro over them. And then just bring them together and then use a skill that uses AoE aggro, uh, like challenge or 
uh, taunt, pretty much anything that is AoE aggro and that allows you just to get full control and stops your healer or your damage uh, people with you from getting attacked. So here I have full aggro, everything's going swimmingly. The RK is using a lot of um, very pretty skills, and I'm just hitting it with my shield. <laughs> Is it shield? No, no, it's sword, because I'm not even in tank mode. Anyway, um, so we've got the flag, we're going to progress through, we've reclaimed the haunted alley. I think it's called haunted alley because there's, um, there's a ghost that usually walks around, or floats around, but we don't see him at the moment. Okay, we're going to kill these guys, I'm just going to fast forward through this, this is very simple. Okay, cool, so we've now killed those guys, we can progress forward, we're going to go to the courtyard. And I'm again just going to go around and collect all the mobs, bring them together so that the RK can do an air of effect um, type of damage. Um, this is a lot easier than having to individually kick, click on the mobs. I'm just going to get this guy from up here. There we go, just bring them together. It's also easier for me because I have a few um, skills that can kill four or five in one go. I say kill, I mean attack. Okay, so the jailhouse has been cleared, we can now put them in prison, everything's good in the world. <laughs> okay, so we can claim this flag, we're going to go through the gate. I assume you've probably clicked on this video because you've never had the opportunity to do this instance before, or you're curious, or maybe you're having problems. If you are having problems, just comment below and I'll try and answer them the best I can. Also, um, I believe Gaston checks on my videos regularly, so he'll probably answer your questions as well. Which is very kind of him. Okay, so we're going to um, just kill these guys here after going through the gate. Uh, this bird, I believe you have to kill the mobs around it first. Um, and it just makes it easier for it to die. I'm not entirely sure. We killed it so quickly, I, I can't actually remember. Um, this is the stage just before we get to the final boss. And it's rather simple. You just have to go around, find the mobs, kill them. They can be quite hidden, so... Um, make sure that you've got the floating names on and you can see them, which is a lot easier, especially at this kind of uh, night time graphic. Just going to bring them all together, makes it easier for me and Gaston. We get this giant here. I love giants in Lockdrew because the way they run is, is very slow and it's weighted and you almost feel that you, you can see how heavy they are. I think the uh, developers th have done quite a good job on them. So I'm just going to charge forth and get some more mobs, bring them together. Uh, this, uh, it's also the reason I, I jump ahead is because it's a it's a form of kiting, whilst um, I have full aggro. It allows Gaston, who I know is a ranged type of DPS, he can then attack without having to move much. Um, it's a lot easier on both of us because it means that I can run through, get the rest of the mobs, so we're not wasting time. Whilst Gaston is now um, attacking whilst he's running from behind, which is quite good. Okay, so this is uh, this is Gore Tusk, which is one of the significant, um, oh, what do you call them? They're like elites. They, they sometimes appear, they don't always. Uh, I think there's a deed for killing all of them. So he's gone down, and we have bacon tonight. <laughs> We're going to go through to the boss now, which is just around the corner. Okay, so when you click on the flag, the gates were open. Make sure that all of your party, because you can have up to 12 people in this instance, um, make sure all of them are inside, otherwise they'll get locked out. At the moment, because it's level 95, we have two bosses. Sometimes you'll only have one, and this can make it more difficult. So, if you are doing this as a raid, try and have two tanks, and one tanks the other whilst the group are killing. Um, it's a lot more difficult to talk about it um, when it's not here, and I can't give examples, but I, I will maybe do a video of a, of a raid doing this later. Um, so what we're going to do is make sure that the tank has full aggro on both of them. We don't want the roomkeeper, who's rather squishy, uh, to get hit and die. Um, the dude on the left will sometimes summon this statue thing which causes some problems. Um, just make sure that you kill the statue whenever he summons it or indeed you can just um, interrupt his action. So here I have full aggro and soon one of them will die. Uh, the dude that I'm facing will die first. I think it's, a, a, it's advised that you kill him before you kill the other orc. This half orc here. Um, so once you've killed um, both of these dudes, that's the end of the instance. 
Um, it can be quite tricky, but if you've got a healer with you, and a tank, and a damage class who knows what they're doing, like with most things, it, it's very easy, especially at tier 1. It's only at tier 2 and 3 that you really have to have an in-depth analysis of each of the mobs. But at this level, it doesn't really matter. So, we're sorted. Everything's now just dandy in the south of Bree. And we're done. So, thank you Gaston. You've been amazing as usual. Um, I think we have another video coming up of us in Ivor's Peak. Is it Ivor? Ibura? I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, uh, cheers Gaston, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any questions, just comment below, and I'll, be, uh, I'll do my best to answer them as soon as I can. Okay, thanks guys. Bye!